Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. This is Link Drive. Thanks for joining me today. I want to show you how to go about creating a custom resolution to do something called downsampling. For those of you who aren't tech savvy, basically, downsampling allows you to run a game at a higher resolution and basically display it to your screen and make it look prettier. For those of you who are tech savvy, I don't think I need to go into full detail. I'm pretty sure you already know why but the TLDR of it is less aliasing and more screen space to do post-processing effects, which makes the games look very nice. So, I don't expect many people to go through this method. It does require tinkering of your display drivers. It's not hard, it's just intimidating for those who are not comfortable or not familiar with changing driver settings. And especially with dynamic super resolution, pretty much hitting the market here in the next couple of months for all mainstream graphics cards prior to the 900 series. It's This is going to be an obsolete method, but both methods have their perks and they both have their downsides. So again, this is going to be just the custom resolution method, not the DSR method, which I'll go over in another video. So to get started, what you want to do first is go into NVIDIA Control Panel. And you're going to go into your change resolution setting. You're going to see a customize option here, and that's what you're going to want to click on. And you can see I've already got a custom res here. I'm going to go ahead and delete it just for reference. Okay, there we go. And when you click on create custom resolution, you're going to you're going to get a disclaimer saying that you might damage your your display or whatnot. You don't need to worry about that. If you're not touching the refresh rates, you're not going to damage your display. Um, it's it's possible to increase the re uh, increase the refresh rate, but whether or not you'll see uh, a negative side effect really depends on the screen. I've done it on my desktop displays, and it's not really had many issues with it, going up to about 70, 74 hertz. My laptop display was a different story. It started getting dead pixels, but dead pixels went away when I brought it back down to stock settings. So on a 1080p screen, you can go up to 1440p without doing a whole lot. All you need to do is set your standard, your timing standard, which is going to be hidden, hidden initially. You're just going to want to expand that section, change it from automatic to manual. It's going to unlock these settings, and it's going to keep them at these settings. You want that. If the settings go higher, it increases the pixel clock, and you can't really exceed 164 hertz. But again, in this case, you don't really need to know that. So, really, that is an unaccept unacceptable character. Great. Way to foobar my home row keys. Vertical lines 1440. That is 1440 progressive, and you're going to want to test that to make sure it posts. 99% of the time it will post. I have never seen a 1080p screen not post on 1440p leaving the timing standards set to manual. And we hit OK and you can see that it is now listed as a custom resolution. So, if you want to go over 1440p, there is really only two sets of numbers that you probably need to remember. This is pretty much a standard number that I've used across four or five different types of panels, and it's worked every single time. So, th these are the numbers that I like to go by. If they don't work for yours, then... If you're tech savvy, then you can try tinkering with the numbers a little bit. Uh, I'll leave a link in the description below to the Guru 3D forums that has an ongoing discussion about creating custom resolutions in NVIDIA Control Panel. Um, if you're not tech savvy, then I would just leave it at 1440p. Downsampling from 1440p is still a pretty good boost in quality, especially if you got the horsepower for it. So, moving on, if you want to go to 4K, for example, and this counts for any resolution above 1440p again, so keep that in mind. You 
you type in 4K, and what you want to do, close fraps there, it's kind of getting in the way, is change the total pixels to 20, 20, around there. You can go a little bit higher, but I generally do a 20, 20 and 1090. Now the reason why you want to go 2020 and 1090 is that if you leave it too low, um, and too low is just like a few pixels above your your native resolution. You, you have to stay a few pixels above that, otherwise it won't work. Um, this lowers your your pixel clock, and that makes it compatible with your display. So again, these are the only two numbers that you need to change. Just change it from 2200 to 2020, and I forget what this one was. Just change that to 1090 and test it. And I can see that. Obviously, it's kind of skewed on my recording software because I haven't resized it, but you'll get the idea once you see it yourself. And that's pretty much all there is to it. Now, there is a couple of downsides to downsampling in general. First and foremost is that not all games are really designed for higher resolutions. If you want to go to 4K, if you've got the GPU uh, the GPU horsepower for that, you can definitely do it. But some games don't have proper UI scaling, and when you downsample, um, you're going to be messing with text, um, you know, finer, finer arts, finer, you know, elements on the screen. So it's going to make things smaller. The text is going to be harder to read. Planet Side 2 is a good example of it. It doesn't have any UI scaling at all. So playing at 4K on a 20 somewhat inch screen is a bit of a pain. I use a 32 inch screen and even then it's still kind of hard to read and still kind of hard to see the UI elements at higher resolutions. Um, the second and probably biggest drawback is if you use HDTVs for your displays like I do, um, anything over 1440p on a custom resolution will first make sound not be received by your TV. Second, any sort of post-processing your TV does, like color enhancement or motion enhancement or something any along, anything along those lines, it's not going to be able to do it. I don't know why. I've tried Googling to see if there was a fix for it, and there really isn't. It's not something that seems to be overly common. Most people that downsample seem to be on just standard monitors, not HDTVs, but across all four of my HDTVs, I've never been able to get any single one of them to have sound and have post-processing while downsampling from above 1440. But those are really the only downsides to this method. It's a pretty good method in my opinion. In in some regards, again, it's it's better than DSR. In some regards, it's not. And uh, yeah, stick with me, and I will go over the DSR method of downsampling. Until then, I'll catch you later.